Well, good evening, everyone. Nice to see you here on this awful evening. Um, David, it's a, his first time coming to us, to Chelmsford, yep. so I'm sure you'll be blown away by his paintings. We've got quite a variety of them over there for you to look at. And uh, welcome to those at home that are watching, and I uh, hope you all in, have a nice evening. Thank you very David. much, Christine. That's really lovely. Very kind. Um, yeah, thank you very much for inviting me to Chelmsford Art Society. I've never been before, as Christine says, so hopefully you'll be um, kind of spellbound tonight by what I'm going to do. Um, I'm going to do some mixed media, so I'm going to do thick acrylics over thin. Um, so to start with, I shall use a paintbrush and using the acrylics similar to watercolours. And then following that, once it's dried, then I will put um, thicker paint on with a palette knife. So I'll run through my colours in a moment, but before I start, I will just show you one or two of the kind of things I do other mixed media on. Um, something like that, Seascape. This is acrylic with wax pastel. Um, so, you know, that's taken from this part of my brain kind of thing. It's probably somewhere I've seen in Cornwall, Devon, somewhere like that. But uh, in general, you know, that's how I tend to paint when I'm out. Um, with the mixed media. <coughs> I'll pop that down there. Then we also have um, Still Life, From Life. So that's another thing that you can do. Obviously mixed media, the flowers in a vase with fruit around and bright colours again. I paint very, very vividly. Even my watercolours are very, very bright. That's the main thing. On there. And then this is the most recent piece of work I've done. Um, this is a uh, paper mill lock in Little Baddo. I don't know whether every, any of you know, but it's walking towards, um, uh, where are we? Haybridge, that way, Molden, and there's a pathway, and I did that from life. As you can see, I think I had to hurry in because obviously there was a dark sky there, um, but uh, that was just kind of the sheet's parsley. So you can get a different effect with the actual paper rather than using board. Okay, so I thought you'd just like to see those. I have brought some other paintings over there, so do help yourself and flick through them. They're not precious, so, you know, on the tables there. Um, so the board I'm using is hardboard or MDF, I've got hardboard tonight. And what I've done, I've put a layer of gesso, white gesso over this, and I've just slapped it on with the decorator's brush. And it gives you a lovely kind of tooth to the board um, for obviously the acrylics. Um, the acrylics I use are Galleria. Um, those are the kind of water ones that I use. And then for the thicker paint, I use um, the Liquitex, the heavy body. So they're quite good paint. And also what I do use as well is a heavy gel with the thicker acrylics as well to just make that lots more texture on when I use the palette knife. Um, so I'll run through my colours. Um, I've got titanium white, um, cadmium yellow pale, lemon yellow, cadmium dark, orange, cadmium red, magenta, little bit of um, cobalt blue and then I've got powder blue and a powder kind of um, purple and then I've also got ultramarine, cobalt blue, turquoise and phthalo green and I'll show you how that they are just presented on the palette like that. So the palette I just use an old piece of cardboard with clips on and greaseproof paper and you just throw that away that's the easiest thing about it you know you don't have to worry about these real expensive palettes stay wet and all like that. Just use that because invariably the acrylics are going to dry. Um, so what else am I going to do? Oh yes, brushes I'm going to use, just ordinary decorator's brush and thicker one and longer bristles. I do go down to smaller brushes as well, but in general I will use this kind of brush. And of course these are always handy to get the tops off your paint <laughs> with acrylics. <laughs> Okay, right, and I've got a little sketch here. I'm sorry you can't see it, um, but uh, this is one I did a while ago of kind of a snow scene, and I've just taken a very quick kind of copy of it 
um, and just highlighted some of the trees. And what I'm going to do, I'm going to change the seeds and I'm going to put some bluebells in it. So um, we'll have a go at that tonight. If you've got any questions, shout those out. Um, you know, I'll take some questions. Just trying to find the bulldog clip now. Where's that gone? Ah, right, yes, well away. Thank you. I knew it was somewhere. <laughs> right, we'll pop that up there. And I can see that then just to refer to on the painting. Whoops. Let's get that on there. Yeah, just basic. Right, okay. So what I'm going to start with, I'm going to use a tiny piece of water. I'm not going to use too much water at the moment. And I really want to establish these kind of trees in here, first of all. So that's what I'm going to do with some paint now. So I'm going to take some Windsor Violet and a little bit of Cobalt Blue, piece of white and a little bit of magenta in it. And um, just get some kind of colour on here and start getting the feel of the paint and the board. So. I'm going to think about some trees possibly coming in here. There's a bit more water than that. So back into the paint. Might put a little bit of turquoise with that as well, just to blow it down a bit. Um, so just establish these. Perhaps one coming there as well. There might be one coming here. Not on the, all on the same plane, but. Uh, we're going to try and get those. So I'm going to push those back, push those back in the background and then bring some trees down here. That's the idea. So let's go back into this. A little bit of the powder blue with it this time to just change the kind of tone. Push those back even more and we've got a few more trees coming down here as well. Um, need a bit more water. Let's go back into that. And there's one big tree here, so let's pop that in just there. I might have one coming up there. So we've got that kind of line there. And then I really want some trees coming down at this kind of angle, thinking about the composition as well. So this kind of diagonal coming through. I might put one in the corner here as well. I think there was just a little bit up there as well. So, so let's get that in there. This kind of lovely purpley colour. I'm going to brighten that up a little bit with some red. Might put some orange in that as well. So let's come down here with some brighter trees. And uh, there's one going off this side. So this kind of plane here. Just bring that down. And for the moment, I'm not doing any detail. I just really want to establish these trees in this painting here and possibly there and then we've got a larger tree coming in here possibly lower than that so let's make that a bit bluer um, a darker color again some more turquoise in that perhaps from here we've got that one coming up here and another one perhaps coming there like that and then we've got, as I say, kind of bluebells somewhere in the front here. We'll worry about those in a moment. So I'm just establishing the kind of perspective and the distance in this painting to start with. Then I'm going to go down here. There's another little small tree here. So let's see if I can get that in as well. And then I think I've established my main trees to start with. So let's get that. And that might have some parts in there. Oh, look, lovely kind of colour coming out of there now. The kind of um, turquoise that I had on my brush. This is the beauty of this brush. It kind of splits and pushes the paint out whenever it feels like it. Makes it, again, far more random. That's quite a good idea. Right, OK, so I need to fill in a little bit here. I might put one more tree in there as well. Let's wash the brush and then I can start putting some colour in um, in the background. Now this is only an underpainting. It isn't obviously going to be kind of finished colours. 
Um, it's, it's just an underpainting to just put that uh, basic colour on underneath. Okay. Right, so let's see what I can do with some brighter colour. Let's go into the orange and yellow. A little bit of red in that as well. Looks like an autumn setting, doesn't it? <laughs> I'll put a bit of white in it as well, so we'll get the white coming in there. And I'll change a little bit of colour to come through there. Probably make that a little bit darker as well as it goes back a little bit. So get some of the paint out of there. Right, okay. So I'm mixing ultramarine, a little bit of turquoise, a little bit of white in there as well. So I'm trying to push that back again, a little bit more in here. Oh yes, look at this lovely colour coming out now. So you can see, I'm just trying to get this background going, just trying to just get some paint on somewhere and actually get that looking. Grey colour, that's quite nice, goes in the background there. Drip it a little bit, so let's just pop that on there. Okay, a little bit more. And again, this is the beauty of it, you can change the look. I like that now, that's got quite a bit of light on and that's kind of receding a little bit more there. So that's quite nice. I think I might bring this tree down a little bit more. So let's go back into the dark colour, perhaps bring that down to about there, that part. <coughs> Oops. Something I've trodden on, never mind. Right, okay. Let's go back into... So I'm using a little bit of the lighter colours, the powder blue and the powder turqu um, powder um, violet. Let's look at the tube in. Just get some colour again in there. And again, while I've got this colour, let's try and get some kind of the bluebells coming through there, the lighter colour. I don't want to cover it with bluebells. Often you see a picture of bluebells and they're, you know, they're all over the place and it uh, doesn't always look that way sometimes. Let's change this colour here. And when you do anything like this, you often think to yourself, oh gosh, that looks awful. You know, um, stand back at it and uh, it's surprising how people think, where on earth is he going? What, what's happening with it? But you'll see, I'm sure, as I go along. So I'm going to introduce some brighter greens in this now. Um, I'm using Saulo green and lemon yellow for this. Yes, so it's quite a nice, nice green, nice and bright. Don't want to cover it all, but to certainly need to cover some of the green in there. And I, as I say, this is only an underpainting. You haven't got to worry too much about colours and how they mingle at the moment. We'll come on to that a little bit later, once we've done a little bit more kind of background. Right, okay, so let's get some darks in. So I'm going into the purpley blue and a bit of ultramarine and we'll get that in here. Really want it more green than that, so let's go down here. Really want it quite nice and dark at the bottom here. Then I can go over this with the lighter greens and the bluebell colours once it's dry. That's the thing. 
And let's really be bold. Let's go to another brush because that's getting wetter and wetter. I'll go to a smaller brush. We'll put a little bit more kind of bolder colour in here as well. Look at that nice and red. Again, this is only an underpainting. Obviously the red and green, opposite complementary colours. It's going to be quite nice once I put some kind of green over that as well. That's the same. So filling all this in really in between the gaps is the main thing. Do you paint on kind of a board or canvas when you paint acrylics, oils? Canvas, yes, yeah, okay, yeah. A lot of people do. I'm, I haven't used canvas for a long, long while. I think I last used canvas when I was at school. <laughs> um, what I was going to say is I've never had any formal training for um, art at all. Um, I did GCEs at school going back to the 1970s and I got my GCE art, but that was about it. Um, there wasn't enough money in it at that time, so I ended up as a civil servant, and I'm still a civil servant, 45 years later. <laughs> but, uh, you know, this has obviously been a, quite a nice hobby to uh, come back to when the stresses of civil service are involved. Right, OK, so we're building up some lovely colours. Let's put a bit of turquoise in there as well. and a bit of magenta. And I'm tending not to um, rinse my brush all the time either. Let's just go and see how this goes on to start with. And I'm just, just doing some of this background here a little bit more. I need it a little bit darker there. So let's get some of those. Again, some of these trees are gonna be lost. I'm not too worried about that. You know, I can come back to that and think about that as I go around the board, that's the thing. Right, okay, we're getting there, I think. I think I need some orange to complement and um, reflect in that uh, part of the painting. So let's go on and have a look at some orange in there. Um, Just need to get an absolute clean brush really for this. So I'm going to go back into the orange. Might put a bit of white with that as well. And as you can see, my palette gets really messy. It uh, does get all over the place with these kind of colours. But uh, try and keep them as clean as you can. That's the beauty of this kind of work. The bright colours with the acrylics, they do tend to keep their colour nicely. Let's put some own in here as well. Okay, we're getting there. As you can see, I jump about all over the canvas as to where I'm going next with kind of colours, that kind of thing. So, you know, that makes a more lively painting as well, that you're repeating those colours. Um, right, OK. Back into the blues. A little bit of cobalt and ultramarine together. Often the blues mixed together are quite nice, so we're going to pop a little bit more of the kind of bluebell colours through here as well. Just really want to get this kind of covered now. That's the thing. Don't particularly want too much white showing through, but that's often quite a nice effect. Make sure we go right through. And we'll go back to a little bit more greeny yellow in here as well. Again, the uh, lemon yellow and a little bit of thalo green. Get that lovely kind of fresh colour. Blue bells in there. And come down here with a little bit of green as well. So let's go back to this. And 
nice light patch there which I can put dark over. That's the beauty of this as well. Again, popping some colour in. It was starting to get that nice flow and that diagonal movement in the painting that's so nice um, in a painting. And we'll pop a little bit more green down here. Right, okay, I think we're getting there. As you can see, it is very bright and in your face. That's the thing, that's what I like with this kind of painting. And also with the kind of mixed media that I do as well, nice and bright. Right, okay. So I need to put a few more darks on these trees. That's the next thing I need to do. So we can pop those in. And thinking about the light, have the light coming from the left. Sometimes it's quite nice to come kind of backlit, but uh, I think I'll put it from the right, from the left. And we'll just put some more in there as well. Okay, let's put some more dark in here as well. So we've got something to pop. It's the beauty of acrylics. It's quite warm in here, so I'm sure they will dry quite quickly in this room and uh, they'll be ready for the top layer fairly quickly. Okay, so we're starting to get the kind of feel of the woodland through there and a bit of light coming in. Let's go back a little bit more dark in the back here. I'm just going to bring something down as well there a little bit more. It's thinking about the planes as well of the trees, you know, receding as well, coming down through the wood. So it's a shadow through there. Okay, right. This point I normally stand back and see how we're going. Come out of it. Yeah. Okay, right. Let's just, again, I think I need a little bit more kind of orangey yellow colour, perhaps through here, just to brighten a little bit more of this here. And a bit more up here. Are any of you as brave as this? Yes? No? <laughs> it's just taking the plunge, isn't it, with something like this and thinking, right, I'm going to go for it. That's the thing. Just really need to sharpen up that tree a little bit more. And this one, I think, bends the other way as well. So. Yeah, good. So we've got a little bit of a pathway going through as well and we've got obviously a lot to play with down here as well that's going to be quite dark. In fact I can go a little bit darker than that. Let's go back into some kind of... There we go. Right, coming together. Right. Fill in a little bit more of the kind of white areas I can see. And then, okay. Right. Um, what I will do now is I'll uh, <coughs> do a little bit of kind of scumbling as well on the painting. So getting kind of a bit of texture in here as well. So thinking about the kind of smaller branches and that kind of thing. So putting a little bit more texture and uh, these kind. 
just just the end of the brush. <laughs> yeah, just the end of the brush. So just uh, putting that in. Some of these are going to be kind of white as well, so a lighter colour. Let's just get those in as well. And just really mixing a kind of muddy colour, really, I suppose you'd call it, kind of blue and red, and just trying to get that in as well on here. And perhaps some texture in the uh, bottom here for some of the bluebells as well. There we go, it's starting to... Cobalt blue is quite a nice colour for bluebells. I tend to mix ultramarine and cobalt blue and trying to get those too balanced for bluebells is, is not too bad. It's uh, quite a nice way. So getting a little bit of texture in there and might be a bit more here as well. So just getting that. Because some of the bluebells will be kind of sticking above some of the, or up above the kind of green within the uh, foliage or grass or their, their own leaves. So just try and get those in as well. It's quite nice to put that in. Let's go into some greeny red as well. So, put a bit of texture on that tree trunk as well there. Any of you been watching Bob Ross? Yeah? <laughs> like him, love him, hate him? <laughs> He's, uh, but he already was very clever, wasn't he, really? He, uh, um, had got that technique and uh, well away. It's nice to see it revived, definitely. Um, BBC Four, I think it is, isn't it? Yeah, it's quite good to watch. Right, so we're still putting texture in here, still putting these kind of um, branches, these smaller branches in here. This is quite thick paint here, so I really want that to dry as well. And then there might be a few more kind of trees there as well. Okay. I'm going to swap to actually another small, smaller brush. I just really want to do a little bit more kind of um, with the branches and it's not uh, coming out so well just using the end of a brush. So I've just got a, a brush that's gone a little bit kind of hard here and I'm starting to get a little bit more kind of texture with that as well. So. Sometimes these trees have kind of um, a mass of branches, kind of like a, uh, I think they call them witches' brooms or something, don't they, where there's lots of kind of branches at the bottom, kind of thing. Let's put a bit more texture on this one as well. As you can see, I jump all over the place on the canvas and board, um, you know, just just thinking where I can put this, where it will sit quite nicely and give that kind of texture. A bit more texture in there as well. And it's nice where you get the real light patches and the darker kind of bluebells or whatever coming up from that. That's quite nice. Okay. Right. I'll just put a little bit of shadow coming from that tree as well. Perhaps there. So it's building up all the time and thinking about light and kind of texture, that kind of thing. Whenever you do a painting, it's what we're thinking about all the time. So. Good. What I might do as well, let's just give this a little bit of a wiggle as well on there. 
So again, this has got some uh, bristles in it, but they are, as I say, stuck together. I've probably used it before and uh, haven't washed it out properly. So, But it's quite a nice brush to just use in this kind of way. Okay. Right. So as you can see, you're still building up kind of layers with this uh, texture on here, these trees. I don't want to go too thick because a, it's going to take a long while to dry, <laughs> and B, um, you know, that's the next stage. That's the thing that I've got to do, so. Good. Is it looking? Yep, that's coming on, I think. Just put some light in there. Okay. Right, I think I'm going to go back with the brush a little bit more. I think I'm going to put a little bit of um, lay more layers of kind of liquid paint on there. So now to make it a little bit, uh, oh, I think it needs some brightness in there at the moment. So let's go back into that. The paint on the palette is drying very quickly. I can tell that. So. Coming through there as well. Let's go back to some yellow colour. Go back to some darker colour for down here, just thicken some of this a little bit more. Questions while I'm finishing this part at all. Have you always used this vibrance? Yes, yes, I have. Yeah, I mean, if you saw my watercolours, they'll all be vibrant, definitely. And I use um, acrylic inks with the watercolours as well. Um, that's often a nice, nice way of um, keeping the watercolours fresh. Really, putting the acrylic ink in there. And again, it's the mixed media that I enjoy doing. That's the thing. Is your garden like this as well? It is, yes. My garden is very bright and very vivid. <laughs> yes, I have done a lot of paintings in my own garden, yes, in the years gone by, definitely, yeah. Yes, I certainly enjoy gardening as well. Um, but, uh, you know, it's, ju it's just what takes you, isn't it? That's the thing. It might not necessarily be be everybody's uh, cup of tea, but uh, the paintings over there, the two garden scenes are um, the Green Island Gardens in Colchester. I don't know if anyone has been there. They're on a par with Best Chateau Gardens and they're certainly well worth a trip, especially this time of the year or in the spring. You know, the autumn colours are fantastic there. Um, whether it's open with coronavirus, I don't know. <laughs> But um, certainly, you know, it's worth, worth a visit. So we're starting to get some nice light in here as well. That's, that's the idea. And these trees, you know, are starting to kind of get that texture that uh, you see on trees. Trees aren't brown. You know, a lot of people, when they start out painting, they reach for the brown. And uh, a lot of people that uh, I tutor, you know, they say, oh, shall I put some brown on that? I said, oh, well, think of the real colour of the tree rather than what you think they are. Don't paint what you think. 
paint what you see, that's the thing. And uh, people will say trees are brown, but they're not. Right, okay. Good. Brilliant. Okay. And you can see how the orange there is really lovely against the kind of blue and that's what I really hope to keep. You know, some of these orange colours I really hope to keep and uh, let that zing through. That's the thing on this. Just going to fill in a little bit more of the white. The paint is drying so quickly tonight. That's the thing. Must be under these lights. <laughs> Good. Just trying to get it so that it is actually quite dry now. <coughs> really want some light on this tree as well, so let's put some on there just to start that off. I don't want to do too much to that because that will be for the thicker paint to come on. Okay. More dark. You can see one or two more patches of dark. I think I really want to take that dark out there as well. Again, if you were in a wood looking at this scene, you'd see the kind of lights and darks. Um, you know, that's the kind of thing I'd look out for, the kind of light coming across um, in a painting, definitely. Okay, right. I'm going to go back to a smaller brush again. Just a little bit more on that. I really want to make something of that. Those branches coming out there. Draw um, branches out from the trunk. I never come in um, to the trunk. I always go out from the trunk the way they grow. It's the best way to paint branches. I don't know whether you're aware of that, but that is the best way to get some kind of resemblance of the branches coming down. And again, this up here. Okay, good. Probably have a bit of a shadow coming out there, so we'll pop that in with a little bit of blue. Use your fingers as well. That's often a nice way of getting the paint to move around a bit as well. Right, okay. I mean, sometimes I use oil on top of acrylic, but again, oil takes such a long while to dry and uh, you're waiting around for that. And uh, it's transporting at home as well, that's the thing. With oil, you know, no matter how careful you are, you probably uh, put it on the car seats or something like that. <laughs> Whereas acrylic will be dry, that's the thing. Which you no doubt you know. Okay, right. I think I've got to leave that there for a moment, just see how that dries. Um, I might just add some of that so that it starts to dry. It is drying quite nicely now, so brilliant. Okay, right, so I don't know whether you want to come up and have a close look, you know, individually, just see what I've done while I'm just preparing my palette now again. So we'll have a five minutes kind of have a look and then um, I'll start again if that's okay, yeah? While I just sort out the, the kind of colours for the next part. So if I take this away, out of the way, then you can come up, can't you, and have a look, have a closer look. And um, about probably 20 years or so now, when I first started at school, I had oils and poster paints, that kind of thing. And then I did very detailed watercolours. And... Um, about 20 years ago, I thought, no, I really want to do something different. Um, 
I thought, right, I'll have a go just with some mixed media. And I did a lot of the acrylic and pastel to start with. And then I thought, right, OK, I can go to board and um, have a go with the acrylic underneath. And as I say, either oil on top or the acrylics, which are quite nice. But you do need the heavy body acrylics to give that kind of texture to it. So, yeah, that, that's the um, way that I have actually progressed, if you like. I mean, some people say, oh, no, we prefer your watercolours. You know, they come to exhibitions and say, David, where are your watercolours? So I say, well, they're over there in a portfolio, if you'd like a look kind of thing. So these are the kind of ones that I've, I've tended to stick with as well. Yeah. Um, just, just freeing up, really, just doing something different and uh, imagining colours as well. I mean, these vivid oranges and reds are just not necessarily realistic, but... They make it sing, you know, they make a lot of light in it, definitely. <clears throat> so that's, that's how I've progressed from that, yeah. I mean, I think everybody starts on poster paints, don't they, when they're at school? <laughs> and then I was fortunate enough at uh, secondary school, I had a, a good art teacher there and he did oils a lot. Yeah, did a lot of um, kind of oil work. And um, that uh, was what I was doing for a long while but very, very kind of detailed oils as well, you know. Right, okay, so what I'll do, I'll get a bit more paint out. I think that's probably drying quite, quite nicely now, so we can have a go. And I'll, when I've squeezed this out, I'll tell you exactly what I'm using, the kind of colours, um, because again, they're very vibrant. I don't use any earth colours. I don't use the umbers or the burnt siennas or anything like that at all. I use kind of really vivid colours. Um, I sometimes use black. That's the only other thing I do use. Um, one of the uh, pictures I had earlier of Cornwall, I use some black in that, um, but very sparingly. Whoops. That's clever, where's that gone? Yeah, so that's, that's what I do. Um, right. And these kind of Liquitex, are, I don't know whether anyone uses them at all, but they are a very thick um, kind of paint. I think they're an American company, actually. Um, so, you know, uh, have a hunt round, see if you can find them. You need a good art shop to actually uh, um, find them, but uh, they are about. Um, yes, some of the uh, blues and cobalts and purples, that kind of thing, are expensive, but they're worth it if you're going to, you know, get the consistency on your paintings. That's the thing. Um, you know, they're, they're just worth going for. Um, and of course, I'd still use white as well. Um, so we got the greens. Right, OK. Um, light blue, have I got this one out? Don't know which ones I've squeezed out, which I haven't at the moment. So bear with me. Light blue, violet. Yeah, there's a lovely lot of colours there. Right, OK. Now, the idea is I'm not actually going to completely, again, cover, let some of this underpainting sing out. Um, so, you know, I'm going to start with the uh, paint very thinly, and then eventually I shall build it up thicker and thicker, and I will put some of this gel with it to make it um, more textured. That's, that's the idea. And let's find some white. Just need some darker. I have to resort to some of the acrylics that I've used before, but I will thicken those up just so that I've got um, the colours I need. So you can see this palette is far more kind of creamy and uh, more vibrant, lighter colours really. So that's what I feel this painting needs at the moment. So. And um, we'll see how we go with that. OK, right. So let's put some texture gel as well. That's the other thing. And this is just, I don't know whether 
you're familiar with this gel at all, are you? This, this kind of medium that you can use. It, it's called um, Extra Heavy Gel Matte and it's gold in the golden range. Shall I pass it around and you can just take the lid off and have a look? Um, something. There we go. You can just get the idea from that. Okay, I think we're dry. Let's have a look. Yep, I think that's more or less for what I need. You do end up with yuck hands as well, but never mind. <laughs> right, okay. So the palette knife I'm using is just a little trowel. Um, no bigger, no bigger than that. Um, I find that that's enough that I have to use to do this kind of painting. So um, let's have a go. I'm just mixing it up, just making sure it's totally mixed on here. And then what I'm actually going to do is scumble a little bit of this over that texture. Just get that on there. Let's go back into some white. I'm just trying to bring that light in a little bit more. Don't want to lose all that tree there. I just still want that to be seen. But I'm leaving the underpainting. That's the idea. I'm just leaving that so that that stands out. Oh, it's a nice bit of light coming on that tree. That's quite a nice idea as well. So just see how it goes. Just push that palette knife around. I'm just going to change that a little bit, the colour. Um, let's go back into this blue again. Find some kind of lightish blue. Might put a little bit of purple with that just to change the tone a little bit. And again, I really want to come this side now. Let's go. And again, I don't want to cover all that orange up because that is quite nice singing out there. That's the thing. So let's get that. Put a little bit of white towards that, so we're lighting it towards the sky. And perhaps drag that across, because it's that kind of nice purpley colour as well, coming in there as well. So Give that feeling of those bluebells going away into the distance there. Okay, let's find some white again and blue. And again, I'm leaving some of the orange to show through there. That's, that's a nice thing about it. And then where else can I put that colour? I think to myself, right, OK, where can I put that colour again? So I think there's going to be some light bluebells over here. So let's put some of that in there. There might be just a hint of it across that green as well, just there. So it's starting to get colour. And it would be brighter in the foreground as well, brighter and darker as well, brighter colours, not so subdued. OK, Let's see where else I can put that, a little bit there. Might put a bit through there. And this will dry again, so I can go over this. It'll take a little longer to dry than the other paint that I've put on, but it will actually and dry as I can come back to it as well. So let's get some more of the bluebells coming in here. And the, and the other thing is you can be quite free with it as well because you can see some of the texture coming through of the actual gesso as well. Um, and it gives that kind of feeling of little um, bluebell heads coming up through there. Just going to vary that colour just a little bit. There we go, a little bit of purpley blue coming through there. And there might be a little bit of that darker in the shadow there. Okay. 
Now let's go back to some trees in the distance. So I'm going to go back to those. I'm going to use a kind of violet colour. Just put a little bit of yellow with it as well so that it kind of makes a brownie colour. But I don't want it too, too dark. So I'm going to put a little bit of white with it as well. Perhaps a little bit of green. And this is the beauty. You can make some lovely creamy colours with mixing more than kind of two colours. You know, it's very rare that you're going to get this muddy going through. Then we might bring some of that through here as well along this tree. Oh look, some nice green on that, that's lovely. See, you can get some happy accidents as well. Those are the best bits of paintings, happy accidents. <laughs> So again, we can put some green on there and I might bring that down into this part as well. And again, you're only just giving that kind of feeling of it. You're not painting definite shapes in the background here, just getting a little bit of feeling of that. That tree's got to be a little bit stronger, so let's make that a bit stronger. Let's go into the bluey purpley colours for that. And let's go, oh yeah, that's lovely greeny kind of colour on that. Let's put a bit of white with that as well. And again, I make up my colours as I go along. I don't worry too much about how it's going to look at the moment. Does it work? That's the thing. That's the thing you've got to think about. Right, OK, let's go back into this. And again, this violet is really quite a good send for kind of trees. It really is a lovely colour. I'll just put a little bit dark on there as well, that side. And perhaps have a branch come out there, like that, and disappearing in there. Okay. Let's bring a thinner one across there, down to this one. And this has got quite a nice kind of thick trunk in here. shadow on there in that part. Yeah, so it's going through quite nicely. Brilliant. I need a little bit more kind of this yellowy colour, creamy colour in the background there. So let's go to that again. Let's find that. And over this kind of blue it's quite nice. So coming through there, a bit of light. Might be coming across some of these trees as well, so let's get that. It's gone a little bit grey, but that doesn't matter too much. Let's just move that. You often do one of these, and if the kind of easel comes down too far, the clip on the easel, it kind of stops you putting paint right at the top, and you take it off, and you think, oh, crumbs, I haven't done that part. You know, there's nothing on there. So you have to go back and uh, kind of fiddle with it to get it back to what it should be, what you are trying to do on there. So put some more light in here and light over here. So pushing that back, trying to get that light coming through the back of those trees. I often go back and see parts that I think, yeah, I could do with a bit of that colour or what's going on there. <coughs> so, yeah, again, I'm still jumping about the canvas or the board for this. I need to have a look at that tree, so let's do that. A little bit more blue and brown. Um, sorry, blue and purple. Get that right in a minute. And then we can... A little bit of dark, yeah, so we've got a little bit of green coming in there. Okay, now I really just want a bit more texture on that, so let's get some texture in there as well. Bring that down. A 
and this is the beauty, you can put one or two more back into the background just by using your palette knife, starting to get those kind of slimmer trees, thinner trees coming in there as well. So that's quite nice. Just with the edge of the palette knife. This tree is going to be here, so don't worry too much about that. I don't want to cover too much at the top because as I say, some of the leaves are going to come over that. So that's the idea with that as well. Right, okay, so I need some kind of light coming in here. So um, let's put some greeny, lighty colour over that. Um, you're all very quiet. <laughs> Um, yes, I do. I tend to stick to, stick to the same size of board, and I'll tell you for why. Once I get them framed, if they don't sell, I can take them out of the frame and put a fresh one in, and then often go back and put one in that's in the same frame that it was originally in itself. <laughs> so uh, just bear that in mind as well. It's quite a trick of the trade, if you like. Um, that's got too much um, paint on it. Let's that's, that's get some light in there. So yes, they tend to be, the paper, I tend to paint to that mount as well, that mount size. And I find, you know, it's easier then to get them framed. You know, people say, well, what size is it? And you can immediately tell them the size you're looking at. I mean, obviously they can measure it, but uh, it is nice to just be able to use one kind of size. And a lot of galleries nowadays don't particularly like odd size paintings. Um, you know, they tend to say, um, you know, okay, I'll take those paintings, but they need to be a different, they don't need, you know, they need to be a uniform size, that's the thing. So uh, just, just be aware of that as well. I mean, it's up to you. I mean, it depends how many you get actually framed, doesn't it? That's the thing. But uh, in general, that's why I stick to the same frames. Uh, and framing, as I say, is so expensive nowadays. It just depends where you go as well. Have you got a frame that's still in Chelmsford in the um, gallery along? Is it Malsham Street? Is that gallery still there? I haven't been in there for a long, long while. Yeah. Right, OK. So we're building up, still building these kind of colours up, these chunks of colour here. And getting rid of a lot of that. So again, you can hear that lovely kind of um, grinding, if you like, or grating when you put the knife across the surface and get the kind of uh, hit and miss with the um, thicker acrylics. And again, you can bring something like that. Needs to bring some light in here. When you're right on top of it, you think, Right, you've got that part, but I just need a bit of light somewhere in it. So let's go here and bring some light through. And again, that orange is still under there. I'm still keeping that orange and it gives that lovely kind of background to this kind of colour going on there. So, yeah, lovely. I think those bluebells might be a bit high there. So let's bring that down a little bit the kind of level of the greenery there. So, yeah, when you are working right on top of something, it, you do need to stand back, obviously, and have a look. Right, okay, so more kind of bright colors in here. Some of that on the palette. That's 
quite bright that white, so add that up a little bit more. How are we doing for time? I've got about an hour, is that right? Not asleep yet or no bedtime yet. <laughs> I'm just going to put a little bit of brighter colour on that one as well. Yeah. Might turn that down just a little bit. As you can see, again, I'm jumping about all over the place as to where I'm going to put some of this colour. Again, we've got some quite nice dark purple there as well. So let's come forward a little bit more with the kind of uh, bluebells here. So. So I'd wipe that off, go back into the ultramarine and a little bit of the kind of purpley colour, the Windsor purple, I think it is, Windsor violet. Just looks the right colour to me, so. And try and get your palette knife to actually bring some of those colours up a little bit, so that they are there and sticking up. They're all not sitting all at one part on there. I think I've got a piece of grease proof stuck to that. That's better. Take that off. I don't want that on the painting. Um, again, I'm going to put a little bit of thickener in this as well. So it just thickens it up, gives it a bit more texture in there. Perhaps a little more purple as well, just to darken it a little bit through there and I'm going to put a little bit of dark through here as well over this part and coming in here as well a little bit of dark shadows there there we go it's starting to kind of break up again with the texture of the gesso there on the painting Okay, good, getting there. I've got a bit of white board sticking through there, so I don't really want that too much. And we'll bring some more in here as well, the bluebells. Sometimes it is quite nice to leave the original kind of colours, you know, the orange and yellows in there are quite nice to leave, that's the thing. I think I need some dark over here, so we'll go back over there. And um, where was I going? So that's really nice and dark, but I'm still leaving that kind of underpainting there, that kind of colour. It's a kind of turquoisey colour there that will really sing out. And these are quite dark in this tree trunk, so just get those on. Then I'll come back to the tree trunks and do a bit more to those now. So we're starting to come forward now, a little bit brighter colours. Um, let's go. A bit of texture and get some kind of colour onto that uh, tree there. Um, and perhaps on there as well. Yep, okay. Okay, let's put a little bit more on here. And a bit on there. I think I'll make that a little bit darker, this one here. So we'll put a little bit of shadow in that side. And then again, we'll go back to our kind of colours here. I 
and that will stand out a little bit more. Light coming through and hitting that tree trunk, that's the idea there. I'm starting to get a nice lot of kind of buttery effects of the acrylic as well with the um, thickness in there. Right, okay. Let's go back. A little bit more kind of colour on this side. Darker colour. Just on that shadow side. And again, a lot more texture in here. Yellow is a bit bright, so I'm going to just tone that a little bit down, steal some colour from this tree and uh, pop it on there. Oh, good. Okay. All right, okay. And let's put a little bit more on the smaller tree here. So let's put a piece on that side and a little bit more on there. Again, I don't want to put these branches in completely because I'm going to put some kind of brighter leaves over this as well. That's the other thing. That's the nice thing you can do. You can put some really bright colours over this. Let's have a branch coming out there. These really are kind of walkable through woods, aren't they? In this time of year, kind of uh, either autumn or in the spring when the bluebells are out. They really are quite uh, nice. Do a lot of you paint out, you know, outside and in, um, in the open air kind of thing, go out and paint from life? Not very often, though. So you do it in the comfort of your own home or in art group, yeah? Yeah. It's nice to go out and do that kind of thing, though. Definitely is. Right, OK. Do you take all of that with Well, yeah, probably a lot of it, yeah. <laughs> um, um, a few more selected colours, I would have thought. I'd probably just take basic acrylics and then some wax pastels probably do um, some on paper and then perhaps bring that home and do uh, painting like this. That's the thing. Right, how are we doing for time? Are we? Okay. Right, so I need a little bit more kind of strength in here, a little bit more brighter colour. So let's go for that. Kind of lemon yellow with a nice kind of, I don't know what the colour's called, um, vivid lime green. That sounds nice, doesn't it? I'm going to try and, and again, light over dark gives you that lovely kind of brightness. And I don't want to cover it again, cover it all up, that's the thing. I just want to give that feeling that there is some light there coming through. Again, I can bring that colour over here. The bluebells have dried here, so I can go over that. And I really want to go over this kind of orange a little bit as well. Um, let's make a little bit of a darker green now, more kind of turquoisey colour. Let's put a little bit of um, ultramarine with it. So, yeah, that's better. A little bit more kind of darker green in these darker parts. And again, we can still bring that back with the bluebells in a moment or two. And again, I can put that down. Um, go back in that darker part and perhaps put a little bit more over here. And again, the beauty of the palette knife is it gives such lovely kind of random marks for um, 
foliage and leaves and that kind of thing, depending on what you're doing. That's, let's go back up the top there. I can see just now I've got this kind of darker green. I'll put some white with it and I can just put a little bit more kind of light over here with the darker green and a little bit in there. Just where I see it really, you know, that's the other thing. And you can actually then also start to bring some kind of little bit more texture to it in the front with this green. So against the bluebells there and perhaps a little bit more in here as well. And where the thicker acrylic has gone on with the water based, again, it gives that lovely kind of texture again on there. Right, okay, so we need to really do a little bit more down here. So let's get going with this side. That's a bit too white. Let's get a bit more green and a bit of yellow in there. My palette's getting the right mess. You can see that they're really, really quite messy. Um, the key is to keep your colours clean, but, you know, have a go. That's the main thing. It doesn't really matter. And perhaps there might be some ferns or something coming in here. Um, that's often... You know, the ferns are coming through from the bluebells as well, just unfurling. So that's quite nice to put in as well. Just those coming up, perhaps down the bottom here. And I've got a nice part there to put some bluebells over as well. So that's quite nice. And the really striking, you know, light against dark, it really does make it quite a nice contrast and vivid colours as well. Right, how are we going? Let's just have a look. What are we doing? Oh, bags of time yet, hopefully. <laughs> I'm just going to put a bit of brighter yellow in here as well, just around those trees. Starting to get a little bit more texture in here as well. This gel is really giving it uh, a nice texture in the bottom there. Okay. bluebells in the distance are a little bit too bright at the moment so I'm just going to tone those down a little bit a little bit of thicker colour I just really want to put those in a bit more and we can bring a little bit of light into these ones here as well so that's quite nice and a bit in here think about some dark over here as well in a moment but at the moment I'll just carry on and get this all completely covered and then we can go from there um, so nice dark in here as well and I can bring this over here A little bit uh, too dark in there sometimes, so let's bring a little bit more kind of lighter blue in with it as well, just to bring those bluebells in. Might 
bring those right down. Um, and a little bit of green, probably, for some of the foliage here as well. Clean the palette knife, so it's got a little bit of dirty colour on there, I don't want that, so let's just wipe that off, we'll go back and um, I'll put a few more bluebells in there. some bluebells showing through that green foliage there. And I just need to do a little bit in the corner as well. That uh, You don't have to cover it with the, the thicker paint. You can kind of leave areas if you think they're working. Um, just leave them as they are with the underpainting but in general it, it looks a better picture you know an overall kind of uniform picture if you're covering the whole of this part with a little bit of the thicker paint even if you're just giving it a kind of a few dollops here and there kind of thing a few parts of paint No, I don't go back to the brush now. I just leave that, let that dry, and then keep with the palette knife. I suppose you could do. Yeah, but you've got all this lovely texture on now, and I mean, if you just upset that, then you've got some issues with it. But uh, yeah, I suppose you could do. Anything goes, I mean, try it. <laughs> That's what I would say. But don't blame me. <laughs> just putting a little bit more texture in here. And in this part, a little bit more light coming through here, this part. And again with those, with those perhaps there. Perhaps some parts there. Okay. I just want to make that link there a little bit as well. Put a little bit more green in the foreground as well. That's a little bit kind of dominant blue, so let's put a little bit of green in there. That's quite nice. But you've just got to watch when it's wet that it can pick up colour underneath and then that's when you start to have issues with kind of mixing and muddiness really in your painting. So just bear that in mind as well. Right, okay. So. I'm just going to put some little pieces of acrylic in here though. Just giving that a little bit more kind of colour in there and more foliage effect kind of thing. And bring that up perhaps to break that up a little bit. Right, okay. Let's just do a bit more kind of to this tree and then I think we're ready. To put a few more kind of leaves on um, over some of the trees. So we're going to put some blue in there, just darken that up a little bit. That tree trunk gets a little bit thin there. I don't like it so that it looks too thin in one place and not in another. But let's put that in there. That one's going nicely behind that one. So that's good. All right. And this is all starting to dry nicely on here as well. Right, okay. So, um, just need a bit more light green in here, I think, just to make that part stand a little bit more. It's 
still got this lovely vibrant orange in here as well. That's the other thing with that. It does come through, but isn't, you know it's there, but it isn't kind of too dominant. That's the, that's the idea of that. So what I'm going to do is just put a little bit more kind of bluebell sticking up a little bit more over that. The blue and orange, the complementary colours, they go really well. And it just takes your eye into the painting a little bit more as well. That's the thing. It's quite light there. That's just... I often talk to myself while I'm, while I'm painting. Uh, invariably, I'll be painting away at home and my wife will come up and she'll say, what are you doing? What are you painting? Because you're talking to yourself and I often do that as well. <laughs> Never mind. Right, okay. A little bit more green in there, I think, just to brighten that up a little bit. Right, now we can go for it. We can start to put some kind of leaves on. Um, the fresh green leaves that we see kind of in spring coming through. Um, I'm going to start with a kind of duller yellow to start with and then we'll come on a little bit more so we can then start to bring some of those down through. Think about how leaves kind of come down from branches as well. You know, just don't dab kind of randomly, but to try and think about the way they come down and the way they would form over these tree trunks and kind of like you know, often the beech trees come down and give that lovely kind of feeling of drooping down, don't they come down to the ground? That's quite nice. And this is where you can cover up all your mistakes and all your holes, because you can just put the leaves anywhere. No one's going to say that leaf didn't go there or that branch didn't go there. So let's just... And they might not be viewing it from the same angle as you. <laughs> So let's get some brighter leaves in here as well. So nice big chunks of paint in here. Oh look, a little bit of blue, a little bit of turquoise. That looks quite nice as well, comes over there. Dot about, move your palette knife so that you can actually see where you, those leaves are coming through. A little bit there as well. So nice fresh greens, keep them nice and clean and you should be well away with uh, paint. I just need a bit more yellow. Lemon yellow, which is quite a nice colour, a cool colour of course. I don't worry too much about cool and, and uh, warm and such like. I, I just tend to think, right, that colour's right for it, I'll pop it on. You know, no one's going to tell you. There's no right or wrong nowadays, is there really? You know, someone's going to say to you, oh, that's not quite right. I, technically, but technical side of painting has really gone out the window. That's the thing nowadays. And again, we can probably go back into this a little bit more. And perhaps there's a lot more kind of leaves coming through there, so. And you can get that kind of um, 
lilt to the leaves as well, you know, um, by dragging the palette knife that way. Um, and if you want to come the other way, you can just put leaves going the other way as well. But I think if you're right-handed, it tends to go that way anyway on a painting. So it doesn't really matter. Still putting some nice bright colours in on here and perhaps down here as well. Don't go too mad though. That's the thing, you can overdo it. Let's put a little thicker. green over there just to bring that through as well. I haven't really worked on those trees either here a little bit more so put a little bit more paint on those, the shadow side, bring those down into there. That's better. Gives it a nice kind of shadowy area there, area there and uh, Stops the eye going out of the painting a little bit that side. Right, okay. Um, I'm just going to put a little bit more kind of purple in there. Just a little bit more on the shadow side. Hmm. That's gone too thick of kind of paint there, so let's put a little bit more kind of thick on there. Yep, and that can come down here as well, giving that lovely kind of wide bottom where the roots go into the ground there as well. And that lovely kind of sweep of that tree as well, that's, that's quite nice. I think that was a bit of a happy accident. I think when I had it in my mind, it was going to be more straight, but never mind. Let's just get a little bit more purple in there for that tree. Let's go back a bit more. Let that dry and perhaps put some, a little bit thick there. Put some lighter green, yellowy color over that. Again, I dotted about, I just saw that out the corner of my eye and I thought, right, I'll go down there and just break some of that up as well, a little bit more down there. Okay. How are we going? That tree's a little bit uh, narrow there, so let's try and put a little bit more on there so that we get that tree a little bit uh, thicker there. Always remembering about our shadows and where we're looking. That's a little bit more there. This one a little bit here. There's quite a bit of vivid orange there, but that's quite nice because that highlights this tree a little bit more as well. Let's put a little bit more shadow on there. Okay. We're getting there. Are we okay for time? Yeah? Right, okay. Let's do a little bit more for the bluebells. Let's see what we can do. And here a little bit more, pop a little bit more 
kind of blue in here. of shadow in there as well. So those bluebells might be in shadow. So we'll pop those on there. In fact we'll put a little bit more on there as well. kind of brightness in that a little bit thicker paint coming on that tree trunk there as well the kind of green moss or algae or whatever is on there a little bit in here as well few more of the leaves just over here a little bit as well so let's get a little bit brighter colour and just bring a little bit more kind of leaves right through there thick there the paint so just keep an eye on that a little bit more and a bright green there as well and again it's knowing when to finish isn't it that's the thing it's you could fiddle forever with the uh, painting and uh, it isn't necessarily going to improve it. I'm just going to put a little bit of darker in there and perhaps a branch going up there. Just to fill that space. Again, use the palette knife to thicken that part. Put a bit more blue down here as well. Bring that down over some of the green as well. It's starting to catch the light a little bit, so make it a little bit lighter blue down here. And just little parts are catching the light of those bluebells down here. all that kind of strong dark in there that's really brought that to into the light a bit more let's just put a little bit more light on that some of the bluebells are quite a pinky color as well so try and think about that color as well that you might be putting into the painting. Put a little bit more dark in there as well. I think we could do just a little bit more. 
kind of in there as well in the light, those bluebells. Right, okay, well let's have a look, see how it looks from the back. Let's go have a look. So I'll just come off camera a minute. Oh, nice oh right, okay. Thank you. Yeah. No, I think I'm going to leave it there if that's okay with you. Um, you know, I think uh, there's a nice contrast between the greens and the blues, definitely. Um, you know, and I hope that's given you an idea as to what you can do with acrylics and a, a palette knife. You know, as I say, when you start something like that, it becomes something you think, oh, where am I going with it? You know, and I tend to, you tend to panic with it and you think, right, okay, now I must keep saying with this and carry on and uh, get a, a nice uh, painting from it. So, um, there we go. That's uh, it. Thank you. <laughs>